What is up guys, in this video I'm going to be going over the difference between the while loop and the for loop in terms of efficiency. Of course, as you may know, they are pretty similar. One requires a fixed number of iterations and the other one can go for as long as it wants. But we never really took the time to understand which one is faster. I mean, logically we know that if we use the for loop for fixed lists and the while loop for theoretically infinite lists, we're going to be all right. And in general, that's all you should worry about when you use for loops or while loops. Just make sure you use them with fixed lists and infinite lists and you will be fine. But this video is going to be more concentrated on seeing which one is actually faster and talking about a few of the points that I read about which one is actually faster. So to get started, I went ahead and created a very simple test script. The first function I created is a timing function, which takes a name and the function that we want to time. As you can see, there's a start time and an end time, and the function is inside the sandwich, which means when we return the end time, it's going to give us the result of how long the function took to execute. Then we have a while loop that initializes this number with the value of zero. And while this number is less than 10 million, it's going to print a pipeline if the number is divisible by 1 million. And at the end of each iteration, it's going to increment the number by one, of course, so that we can stop this loop as soon as we reach 10 million. And then down here, I went ahead and created a tuple of 10 million numbers so that we could insert it into our for loop. Then I called this numbers variable using the global numbers keyword. And for number in numbers, we're going to do the exact same thing as the while loop, except this time, of course, we will be using the for loop. Then down here, I created two variables. One is for the while loop wins and the for loop wins. So we can keep track of which one is faster and how many times each one is faster than the other. And finally, I wanted to repeat this process 10 times. So first we're going to print the test number and then we're going to take a test of the while loop and then the for loop. And if the while loop is slower than the for loop, we're going to increase the for loop wins. Otherwise, if the for loop takes longer than the while loop, we're going to increase the while wins. And at the end of this, we're going to print the results. So let's go ahead and run this script. And the first thing you're going to notice is the test number followed by which test we performed and the time it took to execute the exact same function. So in the end, this is just looping through 10 million numbers and that's all it's doing. And for this very example, you can see already that the for loop is about twice as fast as the while loop. And that is because of course, we are looping through a fixed list, a tuple list, which makes it much faster. And you might have noticed that I actually decided to leave this outside of the function. And if we actually go ahead and take this and place it inside here, we're going to notice a significant increase in the time. But to actually make this efficient, of course, I preferred to keep this outside over here. And using this technique, I was able to make the for loop much more efficient than the while loop for this fixed example. Deep down, a lot of people are just going to claim for this to be syntactic sugar. And in a way, a lot of people are actually right about that. The while loop and the for loop more or less achieve the same result. And if you actually want to optimize your code, these differences might not really change anything. And also in many situations, the for loop is going to look much cleaner than the while loop. And of course, encoding the number one and most important rule is to make sure it's readable so that people can fix it later if anything goes wrong. But I was reading a few key points on why the while loop might take longer than the for loop. And that is because it actually has to go through a lot more steps to achieve the same thing as the for loop, such as first we need to declare a number such as that. Then each time it goes through this loop, it's going to have to check the condition which if it's a simple condition, it can be rather fast. Otherwise, if it's a more difficult condition, it can take longer. And then of course, we need to increment the number by one each time at the end. So these are just added lines of code that are going to slow down the program. And again, it's going to be very insignificant. You probably won't even notice it. But if you are doing this on a micro optimization level, it might affect your code. As for the for loop, as you can see, if we already determine a list ahead of time, we can loop through that list incredibly fast because we already know what we want the program to do. And the program made it super simple. It says, ah, we're going to look at each number in this list and we're going to do the following with it. 
So to summarize, in this situation, the for loop is going to be much faster because it has much less work to do than the while loop. Although in other situations, it might just be equally fast because again, we can just consider these two to be syntactic sugar. But that's actually what I learned from doing my own research. I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say. I know a lot of you are much more advanced when it comes to this micro optimizations but I found it really interesting and I would like to bring a lot more of these optimization techniques to the channel because knowing optimization techniques is going to save us a lot of time and can really help us with our slower computers or even help us with speeding up our extremely fast computers. I'm not going to claim this one to be an optimization technique because of course these are both inbuilt functions that do different things and have different purposes, but they are very similar and that's why I thought it would be interesting to actually record how fast they react to this example script. So it's just another thing to keep in mind when you're programming. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this kind of video, feel free to leave a comment or even suggest something else in the comment section down below. But uh, with that being said, as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.